Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright and I am the resourceful CEO. You may hear some disturbances in the background. There is a lot of thunder and lightning, or shall I say, lightning and thunder <laughs> going on. Uh, the rain hasn't started yet, but it will start soon. Anyways, I'm here to talk to you today about <laughs> cash flow and cash flow management. And it's one of the topics that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Maybe the thunder is, is perfect. It's like, if you don't manage your cash flow, doom could be upon you. Okay, so there's five ways that, and there's, there's a number of different ways, but today I'm gonna talk to you about five ways that you can, depending on what kind of company you have, increase your cash flow. So one of those is if you have a direct sales force, you need to make sure that your sales team is being compensated based on the gross margin of your products and not just on top line. I have seen companies compensate solely on top line revenue. And then what that sets up is, you know, products that have very thin margins get the same commission as products or services that have very fat margins. And that's not what you want to do. You want to incentivize the more profitable product or service more highly than the one that doesn't bring you much profit. So that's one. So let's call that 1A. <laughs> tie, your, tie it to your gross margin. And 1B would be to um, make sure that you do not pay your sales team a commission until the customer pays. As it is very hard to collect after a customer has already received the service, the product or the service. And so in your, your sales team member, unless you have a strong account management team, your sales team or your sales person is the one with the primary relationship with your customer. So they, although they should not be in charge of any enforcement action, leave that to accounting or leave that to the accounting or finance department, but they should be able to say, hey, Glenn, or hey, Mary, uh, we haven't received payment. Is there a problem? So that's what you want to do. And that's what you want to incentivize. So you have to make sure that you don't pay your salespeople until the customer has paid. Otherwise, you're paying your salesperson out of cash from somewhere else. You're not paying them from out of the out of, from the cash that they actually brought in. Big thing, huh? I hadn't thought about it that way. <laughs> okay. And the uh, another way is if you're a distributor or a manufacturing firm and you you're you're either ramping up in a new product or a, a new product or your sales have gone down you can use manufacturer reps you can unfortunately lay off your sales people and use manufacturers rep or like i said if you're increasing your sales instead of hiring another salesperson use a manufacturer's rep in the interim until you build enough business to be able to sustain a full-time salesperson and manufacturer reps know the industry really well and they're commission only. So it's a bit of a win-win or a lot of a win-win, not a bit. Third is put a time limit on your receivables. And I'm serious. So many people have, or so many companies will say, you know, do upon receipt or do in 10 days or do in 30 days. And then they don't enforce that. If you say it, you have to enforce it. If it says do upon receipt, then it should be do, then they need to pay as soon as the bill is received. If it's due in 10 days, they need to pay in 10 days. If it's due in 30 days, they need to pay in 30 days. So you need to make sure that your customers are paying within the designated time frame 
by taking proactive actions. And this is what I've often assisted companies with. What's your, what's your collection policy? What's your credit policy? Not everyone who asks for credit should be granted credit. Are they credit worthy? Are they really credit worthy for 30 days or only for 10 days? Um, so these are the kinds of things to address. Um, are they, uh, if, in, in, in terms of doing your customer, you know, the proactive work to get them to pay uh, on time, you do a courtesy call to make sure that they receive the, <laughs> that they receive the invoice because so many times customers will say, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't receive the invoice. When I mean, you know darn well they did, but you do a you do a follow-up call within two to three days, depending on whether you emailed or mailed the invoice. And then you do a courtesy call just a couple days before the due date or a few days before the due date and ask them if we, if you can expect to receive the payment on time or if there will be any issues. <laughs> Proactive is always better. It's always better to gently remind people and treat, treat it more as customer service than to have to pursue them as um, a debt collector. <laughs> okay. And then another one, Another way to manage your cash is if you have multiple locations. So obviously I'm talking about larger companies here, but if you have multiple locations, then what's the contribution of each location to your revenues or your profitability? So if one location is contributing 70 to 80% and that location has been open for a couple of years, then you may need to consider that you just made a mistake and uh, need to shutter that location or move it to a better location. Uh, analyze why your one location is doing so well, but that other location is not. Or if you have two locations that contribute 80% and one location that contributes 20%, again, why are two locations contributing about 40% each and one location is only contributing 20%? Again, you might want to close that third location that is not contributing to the profitability, that's not carrying its weight. It's not carrying its weight. These are things you just have to do. If you make a decision, you know, the important thing is to make decisions, but sometimes the decisions we make were based on assumptions or faulty information or market dynamics that have now changed. And so we need to go back and correct them, not let them hang out there and bleed uh, bleed our cash flow dry. Then the fifth one, the fifth way to save on your, or to increase your cash flow is to Mm, reduce, or I wouldn't say reduce your inventory, it'd be to make sure that your inventory is, is aligned with the needs of your customers. So it, what's the turnover? Your inventory should be turning over pretty regularly. And if it's not, then you, if it's been sitting there for months, or I've had clients where it's been sitting for years, you need to do a sale, do an you know, send it to an auction house, do a fire sale, whatever it is, you need to get rid of it because that inventory that you're you have on the books as, you know, two hundred thousand dollars is probably worth thirty or forty thousand dollars at the most. So if it's been sitting there for years. So you want to manage your cash by having inventory that turns over quickly and therefore you convert that inventory to cash quickly. Convert that, you buy the inventory, you convert it to cash. You buy the inventory, you convert it to cash. I'm Tiffany C. Wright, the resourceful CEO. Remember to like and subscribe.